Hello my friends, the good thing for today that there is no change in Bakhmut area. So if we zoom in to the place, yes, the situation there is kind of difficult, but if we go to the timeline, so it was yesterday and it is today, no changes, and I guess Ukrainian reinforcements helped to hold Russian salt over there. Plus, today there was some sort of the interesting event happened in the bordering Russian area, Bransk Oblast. At first, it was reported by the Russian media that Ukrainian soldiers went to the Bransk Oblast, the Russian Federation, and got some sort of the hostages. They've shoot the school bus, killing the driver and wounded one of the kids. Moreover, they say that the kid who is the boy was delivered to the hospital and the American bullet was taken out from his lungs. But you know what? The boy's mother say that he didn't get any kind of the wounds from any of the bullets. But the Russian officials already spread the story around their media. So what actually happened there? Actually, Russians went into the Russian territory and those Russians are in opposition to the current Russian government. There was around 40 people and really they captured the local village near to Ukrainian border. They say that there was the fight with the border control police and one of the officers was killed from the Russian side and as for, let's call them Russian opposition forces, so they haven't lost anyone. And right after filming some sort of the videos in a local village, they went back to Ukraine. As for me, it is the humiliation of the Russian defense. They cannot control their borders. And I would say if we send the Ukrainian forces, couple of the battalions to that place, they will for sure capture Bransk city. And by sending even more forces, we might capture Moscow, because more than 90% of the Russian army is now in Ukraine. And this Bransk assault operation today obviously was conducted in association with Ukrainian command and the idea was to show that Russia is very weak, not just the regular Russian army, but also the Russian FSB, because it's their duty to protect the Russian Federation and also the borders of the country. Uh, so those are the guys, they filmed the video near to some sort of the house as it was reported, the locals mostly left the area, left the local village, because it was some sort of the mortar attack before the offensive action of those guys. But no civilian residential buildings were damaged, and they say that they're not fighting against civilians, they're fighting against the Russian troops. Suddenly and sadly, but today the Russian AVAX airplane A-50 took off from Michelishi airfield and flown to the repair facility, which is located on the Russian territory. So the airplane is airworthy, as you see. But we have some sort of the drone images uh, published today. This is the FPV drone that you fly with the help of the Googles. This is not the standard DJI Mavic, they fly with the different principles. And this is the same airplane A50, and I thought that it was the FPV drone attack, but this drone just turned around and landed on that radar plate. That's it, what it done out there. So for sure this drone couldn't be launched from the Ukrainian territory because the range is very sure for it. Plus, as we see over here, drone doesn't carry any kind of the explosives, but it could be that it planted the explosions and took away from this area as one of the variants, my friends, or maybe it was the surveillance mission before the actual attack on the plate of this airplane. But again, it's one more humiliation of the Belarusian, Russian forces, whatever, because this drone might easily go to the Russian military protected airfield and does what it can. Sadly, but maybe it's the missed opportunity to destroy the airplane and many others around. But after all, if this A-50 airplane flown to the repair facility, I think that something was done to the radar because it was the report at first after many of the eyewitnesses heard the explosions, actually two of the explosions happened in this particular airfield. And this is very serious for Belarus and for the Russian forces out there. As you can see, the paint job is kind of 
poor on this radar. About the DJI drones in Russia, officially DJI blocked all of the applications for the Russian users and one of the biggest sales markets of China goods inside the Russian Federation AliExpress also blocked the sales of DJI products. However, there are some sort of the good news for Ukraine today. Illusion 76 was on the maintenance in one of the Russian facilities and it got fire and exploded. Still comparable to A50 modification Russian AVEX, the transport airplane is not that expensive. But anyways, the less military airplanes Russia has, the better it is for Ukraine. And we got the report from the British intelligence. They say that weather helps Ukrainian forces in battle since the temperature rose dramatically, creating lots of the mud on the fields and Russia mostly used the fields for their attack and that's why we don't see the movement of the Russian forces today. And Russia continues to bomb civilians. Last night they destroyed the five-story building in the Parisia city killing many civilians unfortunately. So what they do is total madness. And Putin today was very concerned about the Bransk Oblast attack and he urged the special meeting with his military. And they say that it was some sort of the unlawful act from the Ukrainian side. But really, those were Russians who entered the Russian territory who just want Russia to be free of Putin's regime. And those guys have Russian passports, they do not serve in Ukrainian army, so technically it's the civil war inside the Russian Federation and Ukraine just provides the temporary shelter for the Russian opposition. So why would they blame the Ukraine in that case for attacking their territory? So no matter who was responsible for that Bransk region attack, it was conducted in a very smart manner. And finally, Slovakia is on a final stage to transfer their jets to Ukraine. We are speaking about the MiG-29s. They have 11 in their fleet, but they will transfer just 10. One machine they will put in their aviation museum. Just recently, we were speaking about the Yeysk airfield attack on the Russian territory, but actually it is the ammunition depot that is very close to the airfield. And it is the aftermath of the attack. You can see here there is no grass any longer here as well. So it all burned down. And we don't know from that satellite images whether the ammunition depot was destroyed or not. Because the construction building seems to be intact in its central part. But there could be other storages. And the New York Times came out with the article that Russia lost the biggest tank battle in this war in Wugledar, then they lost around 130 tanks totally, performing the series of attacks in attempt to get control over the single village. It's nonsense. Well, I wouldn't say that it was the classical tank battle, tank against the tank. It was the stupid way how Russia may waste their tanks on the part of the front line. They basically run across the minefields under the artillery fire of the Ukrainian forces. But yes, the Ukrainian army also used some sort of the tanks. And unfortunately, we also have losses, but not as many as Russians. And what is very interesting for me in that case, that the General Muradov, who was responsible for this biggest failure of the Russian army in this war, he was not punished, but he was promoted by Putin and the Russian Z community is mad about it. You know, it have never happened before in the Russian army. Before, if generals would do some sort of the feather, they will be punished for sure. And during the Soviet times, they would be just shot in the head for the suspicious activity, not saying about the big feathers, the biggest feathers in this war, but the general was promoted, so it's very, very funny and good also for Ukraine. Russia need those generals. My friends, now press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, there are some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your awesome support and for your help for this channel. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.